All right, hey there guys, Isaac here. Um, if you've been keeping along with the channel, you'll know that I have been fishing here in Southern California uh, this summer since around June, fishing Silverwood and Castaic, and mainly have been doing a lot of trolling uh, with lead core and with downriggers. Um, all, all my videos are just kind of me going out onto the lake, uh, catching fish, and I'm so glad for all the support that you guys have shown. You guys seem to really like that. But today I want to take some time and do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I rig up my rods uh, for a day on the water. So I've only got another week left before I head back to Texas. I think I'm able to go out a couple more times, but yeah. Just gonna do a quick run through of my equipment and what I use and hopefully you guys can find this useful and uh, get yourselves on some big striper as well. So first things first, as you guys are probably really aware of, is the fact that fly core or lead core and flies is probably the number one way to catch striper down here in Southern California. Everybody uses it. I see you guys using it on the water. It's amazing. Um, that being said, I get a lot of questions about what kind of knots do I use? Uh, what pound leader? What pound lead core? Well, let's get started with that. So first things first, I usually run 18 pound lead core. So that's going to be 18 pound breaking strength, right? It takes 18 pounds to actually break the line. But uh, the heavier a lead core's breaking strength is, the heavier the actual lead inside of it is. Uh, 18 pound I found is the most versatile. It's also the easiest to calculate because lead core has different colors, right? You'll see black and green here. For 18 pound lead core, I found going at around two and a half miles an hour, uh, it'll sink about five feet per color. And that's just really easy to, you know, do some quick, quick math in your head when you're on the water marking fish and you need to know exactly how deep to put it. That being said, I also run 15 pound and 27 pound lead core, just depending on if I wanna stay a little shallower or if I really need to get deep. And right now, as, as uh, the weather's getting really, really warm, I find myself just fishing really deep. I mean, I'm setting my flies probably 40, 45 feet deep. And yeah, so that's that. Right now, I'm just gonna tie on a quick leader. Uh, I use 20 pound monofilament. I use monofilament for the stretch. And it is not as good of quality line as fluorocarbon. However, because I replace it at least once a week, usually in between trips, I'm not worried at all because I have fresh line on my rods at all times. So there's two ways that you could attach these two. One way is you could take out the lead. Let me see if I can't do this real quick. Cut a bit off. I'm going to take out the lead in the middle of this lead cord. That's why it's called lead cord. Some sort of nylon with a center of lead. That's what weighs it down just like that. So you'll see I'm pulling the lead out and what I can do is just break off that lead and then bring this back out. So now I have a little section of hollow nylon and a really easy way, and this is a really strong knot. It was taught to me by actually Mark Franco from a couple videos back how to tie this. Uh, with 20 pound line, typically I could just make a little overhand knot first with the now hollow lead core and I could thread that line right into this hold on takes a little bit of practice but there we go so now I've threaded that line right into here and I'm gonna keep pushing that line in until it reaches you know the lead so now that line this monofilament is all the way in here and I have this little ov overhand loop now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly cinch up that loop as close to where the lead core ends and that monofilament begins. You could always correct yourself later, but you're going to see basically I am making the loop as close as I can. I'm going to try to tighten that up right there. So that was actually not a very good job. I left about millimeter two millimeters there but that is just an incredibly strong knot I don't know why it works so well but it does that is my go-to knot now if your monofilament is too thick or if you're just not able to get it in here another knot that I really recommend is the Alberto knot it's super thin it goes through your guides well and 
uh, before you tie any sort of connection knot here, I would highly recommend removing the lead from the lead core just to make your line a little more um, limp, easier to tie. So because we have that little piece, that little bit of nylon there, I'm just gonna kind of scratch that down until it frays out and I could just take a pair of scissors and carefully cut that away just to make it a little bit cleaner. I'm sure it doesn't make too much of a difference, but I just do this because I like it. So carefully cut that away, test a knot. You do run into some big fish out there, so make sure your knots are all strong. It's never good to work so hard and hook into a big fish just to have your equipment give out on you because you've tied a bad knot. So now that we've tied the knot, uh, I usually like to have anywhere between 10 and 20 yards of line on my reel uh, just because I like to give the fish a little bit of distance between the fly and the boat. So what I'll typically do is I'll have the mono coming down into the reel and for this reel I'll just go back and forth once. So I don't know if you guys can see that but that's the mono going on back and forth once. I'll go ahead and cut it now. And that's going to be it. That is a lead core all set up. Now let me grab a fly and tie it on and we'll be all ready to go out tomorrow. Give it a pull. Again, monofilament, it's a cheap line. It has a ton of memory, but as soon as you pull it out, it's all nice and straight there. So let me grab the fly real quick. All right, so as for flies, what flies I use, uh, recently I've actually been using a lot of Joe's flies from Joe Show Fishing. Shout out to Joe. He makes some really awesome flies and they work great. Uh, this is his yak hair fly. I also am running the shad fly right here. Uh, this guy has been doing great. You could tell he's all chewed up and stuff. But yeah, he makes some really good stuff. I'll link all the equipment down below, uh, at least as much as I can find. Another fly that I use uh, is actually made by a buddy of mine down at Diamond Valley. He doesn't have a website or anything, but if you want his contact information and stuff, uh, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll go ahead and send that to you. As for the knot that I tie, I tie the San Diego Jam Knot. I'm not going to bother showing you guys how I tie it because I don't know how the lighting is or whether my camera quality is good enough to capture it. You guys could. I'm sure you guys could find really good instructionals on YouTube, but the San Diego Jam Knot's really easy, real, really quick to tie. Always make sure to wet your knots, and yeah, it has not failed me yet. So that's going to be it. Cut off the tag end. And that is how I rig up my fly setup. So, really great, super easy. Uh, probably my favorite way to catch striper down here just because you're stripping the fly and you set the hook into one of those big striper you know immediately you're in for a really great fight. Uh, the other technique that you guys see me use a lot is the umbrella rig. Let me grab those for you. Alrighty so these are my two main umbrella rigs. Um, I do not see a lot of you guys using this out there, but these guys work amazingly well. Obviously it imitates a, a school of fish, and to be honest, I've, I'm probably catching more of my big stripers on the umbrella rigs than on, on the flies, uh, just running these on downriggers. So let me grab a couple more things. Be right back. All right, where was I? Yes, umbrella rig. So I run two different umbrella rigs. First one, uh, if you guys know anything about umbrella rigs at all, this is the Yum Flash Mob Junior. Uh, probably the number one selling umbrella rig. The reason I don't have one in a package right now is because of that. I cannot find that anywhere. They should be in stock soon in Tackle Warehouse though. Again, I'll link it down below. Hopefully you guys can get it. Super cheap or fairly cheap in the whole name of umbrella rigs like 13 bucks the wires are great nice and strong and yeah definitely a really good starter umbrella rig if you're not looking to drop 30 bucks immediately uh, i run that on my corrado uh, 76 medium heavy this is a moderate taper i prefer these moderate tapers I think cranking rods if you're in bass fishing just because uh when you're pulling these big old lures you want the rod to absorb 
kind of the drag that this uh, imparts. And I run that on 20 pound monofilament. Again, for that stretch, you're trolling, you're pulling the boat, these fish hit hard. You want that little extra bit of forgiveness just so your line doesn't snap immediately. But Corrado, Corrado, uh, that's a great setup for my smaller umbrella rig. My bigger umbrella rig, this guy, probably my number one producer of big fish this summer, is the Hog Farmer Tactical Flex Rig. Now you're immediately gonna see it's a lot bigger rig. It's actually got six arms instead of five, and here's what it looks like in the package. Great one, I highly recommend this. If you're willing to drop 30 bucks, this is definitely a must buy. The wires are super flexible and really strong. I have actually not had this one break on me yet. So umbrella rigs do have a lifespan, just because we bend the wires here to kind of spread out the bait. Uh, the wires will break here, especially on the yums. Usually I'm running these about two months hard, catching big fish, two months, and then I'll start to really worry if they'll break. This one has not broken on me yet. That's what you get for paying higher quality. And on this guy, actually, I am running a uh, different swim bait. So I'll kind of get into that in a bit. But first off, I want to talk about jig heads. The jig head that I trust the most is the Dirty Jigs uh, Tactical jig, jig Head. It's the Matt Allen Tactical Bass and Swim Bait Head. I run them in two sizes primarily, in an eighth ounce and in a quarter ounce. This is actually a three eighth, but a quarter ounce for my um, uh, umbrella rigs, just because you want the lighter head so you're not dealing with such a heavy rig. You're pulling this thing through the water, it's already dragging a bunch. You don't want to be pulling more weight. On top of that, you're running three heads here. Another thing I should mention is in California, you're only allowed to have three hooks. Um, that's just how it is. I always set my three hooks on the bottom because fish like to feed up or from behind. So it's on the bottom of the rig and it's sitting slightly behind my teasers here. There are videos, uh, ta Tactical Bassing makes a great video on how to rig up umbrella rigs, uh, how they do it for big bass. They do a really good job of that. And yeah, I basically follow what they do. And sorry, jumping around a bit. Maybe I'll edit it, maybe not. But the rod that I use to run the bigger umbrella rig, and this has been absolutely amazing, is my Dobbins 806. Right there, 806. This is their swim bait rod. It is absolutely phenomenal. For only 120 bucks, I think, I absolutely love it. I run it with a 300 size casting reel. This is the 13 Fishing Concept A. Great reel. Uh, definitely get a slower gear ratio. This is a 6-3 to 1, just so you have the torque to crank in these heavy rigs and the big fish, especially if you want to keep the boat moving when you hook into a big fish. So, you know, you hope to catch another one. And on this one, because it is my swim bait setup, I run braid. I run 65 pound braid and then I tie it to a 25 pound leader. Uh, ideally, if you're just going for striper, I would recommend going straight monofilament. Either 25 pound or 20 pound would work great. On this one, I just run 25 pound because it's a slightly heavier rig. So I'm actually gonna retie that knot now, show you guys how I do it. All right, so the knot that I use for braid to mono is called the Alberto knot. Uh, I'll write it down in the description below and I might link a video to it too, but super easy not to tie. Again, I'm not gonna go through the trouble of showing you guys this just cause I'm not sure how the lighting is and whether my camera could actually even pick it up. But I typically like to do seven to eight wraps going there and then seven to eight wraps back. You'll get what I mean if you guys decide to look it up. But super strong knot, it actually turns out into a really nice tight profile. Always wet it and then cinch that down tight. Give it a nice pull, make sure. If you guys wanna look at that, super thin, goes through the guides great. Uh, I use this knot actually when I bass fish back in Texas a lot and yeah, it has never failed me. So it's really strong knot, really fast to tie. And with this one again, I'm running 25 pound monofilament. And with the mono on braid, uh, even when I'm bass fishing, how I like to run it is I'm just going to have it come all the way down to the reel. So you'll see the knot right there, all the way down to the reel and all the way back down. So it's gonna go up and down and I'll probably cut it off around here. 
right? So there we go. And I'll go ahead and tie that on. Again, I'm using the San Diego jam knot to tie my umbrella rig. Uh, great knot to tie, really strong. And I trust it 100%. I'll also be doing a on the water video for you guys. I hope I should be uh, just showing you guys what I do when I'm on the water using my electronics, uh, setting down the lead core, setting down the um, umbrella rigs, doing some calculations to try to get my lures to be right where I'm seeing the fish. So again, this is just how I fish. I think I have done decent this summer. And there you have it, San Diego Jam Knot, nice and clean, really strong knot. And that is the umbrella rig that goes on the downrigger. And if you guys aren't familiar with what a downrigger is, definitely look it up. I'll do my best trying to explain it. Basically, this line doesn't have any weight. The only weight from this rig comes from the actual rig itself or the, the jig heads that I put on. So there's no way I could get this thing 40, 50 feet deep if I need to. So instead what I do is I set it out maybe 20 yards behind the boat and then I will clip the line to a big old weight. Um, I'll show you. So this is the umbrella rig, or sorry, the downrigger setup. There's a big weight that I can lower down and I can tell the depth right there when I lower it down. And basically what that allows me to do is I can set my lures at whatever um, depth I want to set it at, which is really neat. Uh, there is a little bit of thinking to that though, because these umbrella rigs do weigh a little bit. So whatever you set your downriggers at, whether it be 20 or 40 feet, these guys are gonna run just a little bit deeper. I've learned that the hard way, setting my downriggers at 40 feet, trolling over, 40 feet of water and these guys hitting bottom uh, just because they run a little bit deeper. Again, that all depends on speed. It's definitely a trial and error thing, but I kind of have a rough formula for that. Uh, I'll definitely be sharing that on the water with you guys. And yeah, that is going to be kind of how I rig up. So I have my flies, my flies right here. Gosh, it's a mess have my flies, mini rods, and then I have my umbrella rigs. And that has been my bread and butter this summer for the striper around here. Now as for swim baits, because I get a lot of questions about that too. Oops. There we go. As for swim baits, uh, my main go-to most of the time is going to be the Kitex Swing, Swing Impact Fat. Uh, if you guys do any bass fishing at all, you'll be really familiar with these. My favorite color is Electric Shad. Uh, there's also a few other colors I like too, like uh, Pro, Blue, Red Pearl. That's a great color. That's what I run on my hooks. So on my main ones, the ones that I expect to get bit, these guys are the Kitex. And I typically run them in a 4.3 or a 4.8. Recently, I've been going with a 4.3 just because there are a lot of smaller fish around and sometimes you just want to bite i'm willing to downsize a bit just to get that bite now as for these trailers the ones that aren't allowed to have hooks because again california only allows three hooks i really like the reactions innovation uh skinny dipper sorry little dipper and basically what this is it's a three and a half inch little swim bait right and i just clip that on my umbrella rig so it acts as a teaser. It kind of fills out the profile, if you can see how I clip that on. This is the Umbrella. Uh, it's the cheaper rig. That's why I just kind of clip it on. On the higher quality rig, what it actually comes with, if I can show you guys, on my trailers, is it comes with a screw lock. So that's really neat because what the screw lock ensures is that my teasers or these trailers will actually be running straight. It won't be uh, spinning around. It's gonna run the direction that it's meant to run. And I've actually been trying out a new lure on this hog, hog farmer. I've been running the uh, Sixth Sense Divine Swim Baits. These guys have been great. I absolutely love it. 
Uh, let me show you something really cool. This is probably my favorite color that, so far. It's called Pro Shad. It's a 4.4 inch, so it's a slightly larger profile, but it changes color. So if I just kind of put on a black surface, it shows up to be like bluish pink, right? With a pearl belly, but up in the sun, well, if there's any light around here, all of a sudden it turns green. So that is super cool. I love that about it. And again, I have caught a ton of big striper on this. Uh, what I do with this, if you guys want to go six cents, is I run the 4.4s on my mains. Um, and then I run 3.3s. I believe they're 3.3s, most likely, or 3.8s. I'll have to check. I'll double check. I will link it below. But I run the smaller ones as my teasers up here. And yeah, both the Six Cents and the Kitex are re reasonably priced. None of them are super expensive for any reason or another. Now, if you guys fish Silverwood at all, uh, a lure that I've had a lot of success both in the winter and early summer has actually been the Strike King Shadalicious. It's a hollow belly swim bait and it's only a 3.5 inch profile. I run these on my umbrella rigs and they do great. I don't know why. Uh, this is the color that I've been killing them on called IU, if you guys have seen in my videos. A again, it's an absolutely killer swim bait. I highly recommend it if you guys are fishing Silverwood. But if not, if you guys are targeting the bigger uh, stripers, the Fat Castaic and stuff, Kitex and the Sixth Sense Divine, you can't go wrong with that. So that should be it for this video. Um, again, I'll link all my equipment and my lures and line down below everything that i can find and i'll put my contact information down as well if you guys have any questions feel free to email me i'll be happy to answer any of that and hopefully next time i'll see you guys back out on the water and i'll show you exactly how i run my electronics uh, how fast i run the boat again depends on circumstance and just how i kind of fish it set my lines to catch fish so thank you for watching Again, we really appreciate your support and I hope all this information helps you guys. Take care and we'll catch you out there next time.